Hallelujah and blessings in Jesus, friends. Welcome back to Hayekadosh Ministries, where holiness is a way of life. Jesus is truly King of kings and Lord of lords, and the Holy Bible is our only standard and authority for truth. And together, God's people say with hearts of praise and gratitude, Hallelujah. Praise our King. Amen. Now, today brings us to an end of our time together in the book of Job. And it is a fitting end, as you will see. And there is a great lesson that we can take from it. So let us look together in our Bibles, Job chapter 42, and let's pick up where we left off, verse 7. Now remember, Job has heard the counsel of God. He has been put in his place. He understands his position. He looks to a holy God and sees all his shame and failure. He says in verse 5, I've heard of thee by the hearing of the ear, but now mine eye hath seen thee. There is so much that we can take from that, friends. It's one thing to hear of the Lord through the mouth of others, but it's quite altogether something different when we experience the Lord for ourselves. And that's why you will often hear so many say, I was raised in a Christian home. But when I fully understood the sweet grace of the Lord Jesus that had been applied to my heart through confessing my sins and acknowledging my shortcomings, I saw my great need for him and I felt my great love for him. Or as others have said, it's greater felt than told. And that's what Job says here. He says, I've heard of thee by the hearing of the ear, but now mine eye seeth thee. And because of this, I abhor myself because I see you in your grand majesty. I see you in all of your holiness, all of your purity. I see how divine and majestic you are. And in the light of that, I see my sin. I see my failure. No matter how passionately I set myself to follow and obey you, I fall so very short in my attitude in my character, in my person, when compared to the light of your truth, to the glory of your holiness. You see, friends, we all look good when we compare ourselves to Hitler or someone like him. But how do we look when we compare ourselves to our Lord Jesus? We fall at his feet, begging for mercy and compassion, just as Job did in verse 6. I abhor myself, and I repent in dust and ashes. Verse 7 says, Now it was so that after the Lord has spoken these words unto Job, the Lord said to Eliphaz the Temanite, My wrath is kindled against thee and against thy two friends. You have not spoken of me the thing that is right, as my servant Job hath. Now remember, the point of the test that was presented by Satan was that Job would curse you to his face. And Job never did that. Job did merge off in some erroneous ways of thinking, but all the time he stood faithful in the God whom he served. He knew in the back of his mind there was something he was missing. As much as he could try to figure it out, he just couldn't put his hands on it. And it almost seems like now Job understands he sees that this was a trial and that this was the only way to receive the glory that the Lord had prepared for him. What seemed to be at one time evil, unjust, too much to bear, now Job understands he had to be refined. He had to be fitted for the kingdom of God. Job understands before it was ever written, all things work together for good to those who love God and are called according to his purpose. But what's interesting in this verse is that the Lord rebukes these three friends who have spoken against Job. And so notice in verse eight, he says, take unto you seven bullocks, seven rams, go to my servant Job, offer up for yourselves a burnt offering and Job will pray for you. How humiliating this must have been. Yet they're not going to allow their humiliation to keep them from obeying the command of God, but they obey and adhere to the command of God. 
And in verse 9, it says, Eliphaz, Bildad, Zophar, did according as the Lord commanded. And the Lord accepted Job. Look at verse 10. The Lord turned the captivity of Job when he prayed for his friends. Also, the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before. Now, this was grace and favor bestowed unto Job by the Almighty. This isn't a promise that we can hold God to. It doesn't mean that when we lose something, we're always going to get twice as much back, at least not in this life. But it does mean that every cloud has a silver lining. And if we can weather the storm, days of rest and peace lie just ahead. Verse 11 says, Then came there unto him all his brethren, all his sisters, all those that had been his acquaintance before the trial. They ate bread with him in his house. They grieved with him. They comforted him over all the evil that the Lord had brought upon him. And every man gave him a piece of money, and every one an earring of gold. But the Lord, not the people, the Lord blessed the latter end of Job more than his beginning. Now remember, all the way back in chapter 1, verse 3, it says his substance was 7,000 sheep. But now God gives Job in verse 12 of chapter 42, 14,000 sheep. Back to chapter 1, he had 3,000 camels. Here he has 6,000 camels. Back to chapter 1, he has 500 yoke of oxen. Here he has 1,000 yoke of oxen. Back in chapter 1, he has 500 she-asses. Here he has 1,000 she-asses. So God doubled his portion. Now we also know for chapter 1 that he had seven sons and three daughters. And it says in verse 13, he had also seven sons and three daughters. Now, interestingly enough, it doesn't tell us the name of his sons, but it does tell us the name of his daughters. And so it says in verse 14, he called the name of the first Jemima, which means day by day, which to me is an indication that Job learned to appreciate every day he was living in. And so should we, friends. Jesus said, take no thought for tomorrow. Focus on today. Enjoy the beauty and the glory of today. And that's what Job learned in this trial. Don't plan for the future. Do everything in your power to live faithfully and obedient for your king today. So he names her Jemima day by day. The name of the second he names Kazia. And from this, the Hebrew means peeled like bark. And that's exactly how Job had felt. He felt like a tree that had been peeled of its bark. This poor man, the anguish and the suffering that he went through. And so every time he looked at this young girl, it was a reminder of what God had done for him. Not put him through, but done for him because he was better at the end than he was when he entered into the trial. And that's the lesson that we're to learn. We're to come out the other side better for it. And so he named this young girl, peeled like bark. Every time he looked at her, it was a reminder of what... God had done for him, even through the blessing of this young new daughter, what a joy she brought into his life. And the name of the third was Karen Hapuk. Now, I probably mispronounced that, but that's okay. And her name means horn of cosmetic. In other words, bottle of medicine, the very thing that I need. My body has healed after this trial. My soul is in the process of healing after this trial. But you bring my heart such pleasure. You're the medicine that I need. It can also in the Hebrew mean ray of light, which was a reminder to Job that all those dark days he suffered, now every day he can wake up to this beauty in his life who is a ray of light unto him. And the book end, friends, in verse 16 and 17, after this, Job lived 140 years. Now, we were never told, nor do we know, how old Job was when he entered into this. I would speculate, based upon the age of the other men who were much older and wiser, Job is probably somewhere between 40 and 60 years old. And you'll remember back in the days of Noah, men lived much longer than they did later in the Bible or even today. Methuselah lived 969 years old. So we really don't know. Job could have been 600 and something years old. We don't know. 
But it says, after the trial, Job lived an additional 140 years. He saw his sons and his son's sons up to four generations. And then Job went to sleep. Job joined his fathers of the faith. Or as we would say today, Job died being old and full of days. Oh, what lessons we can learn from this man, Job, friend. What lessons I trust that you have learned through this review of his life. And in 42 chapters, there are far too many lessons that we can take away or condense into the last few moments of this video. But the greatest lesson of all for me is the Lord gives. All the wonderful things we enjoy in this life, the Lord gives. They belong to him. He imparts them to us to look after our children, our money, our possessions. The Lord gives and the Lord takes away. And when he gives, blessed be his holy name. And when he takes away, blessed be his holy name. For all in this life shall pass away, but my Redeemer liveth. And I know that I will see him stand upon the earth in the latter day. Blessed be the holy name of the Lord. I pray that you take that advice from Job, that wisdom from Job, through all the days of your journey as you live and serve your Lord. Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus the Messiah. And what a wonderful day, friends, when we arrive in the kingdom and we can sit and talk with this man, Job, and learn from him things that we may not even be able to see through the story that has been given us. Well, I love you, friends. We're going to close there today. I pray that your journey will be blessed. I pray that your life will be touched. I pray that your mind will be changed and that in all things and at all times, the only thing upon your lips will be, blessed be the name of the Lord. I truly love you, friends. Now, as Yahweh wills, and until next time, I'll see you on the next video.